And look at all the lonely people. This is Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, the Lord Jesus Christ. Announced by Pope Benedict the 16th on March the 12th, 2013. Confirmed in an apostolic letter released to the world, March 26, 2013. Announcing the returned, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ in the person of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Ancient populations were using atomic weapons before the flood. In India, the oldest texts called the Vedas and Mahabharata speak of flying vehicles, atomic weapons, radioactive skeletons, destroyed cities tested by modern equipment to be radioactive. One skeleton was discovered to be radioactive, the report said, it is 50 times the radioactive level of people who died in the atomic weapons dropped on Japan. How can this be? To understand anything today, we have to understand the facts of human life. And a battle between us and them is not an alien invasion, as warned would be the case by Werner von Braun on his deathbed. He, the German rocket genius, captured by the USA after World War II and transported to the U USA under what was dubbed Operation Paperclip. So let's sort it out. I have been asked how old is the Earth. The answer is 36,000 years. The aliens are a myth to distract the population from what is really going on. There are several points we have to understand to piece it all together. One, evolution was an observation by Charles Darwin. He did not come up with the idea of a slow change due to natural selection. It was his grandfather. Number two, he sat on his book for 20 years. He was unconvinced himself, but his friend Huxley pushed him into printing The Origin of Species. What has never been answered from any adherent is where did life originate? A rock? Number three, no scientists in the 1850 era had any knowledge of DNA. Had they, then the idea of evolution would never have been given a second glance. Number four, Today we see that the double helix is so complicated. The instructions for manufacturing a strand of protein requires 22 amino acids to be linked together, then folded to make a specific functional part of the higher organism. Number five, but it is a chicken and the egg situation. One cannot exist without the other and to have the parts called amino acids brought to the assembly line requires an unseen guiding hand, like an invisible miniature ship, to first locate an amino acid within the liquid within the cell, grab it, transport it to the precise location, and then assembly continues as these invisible transporters arrive in sequence, one after another in a string 400 or so segments long. What is this invisible transport vehicle? What made the 22 amino acids? Then set them adrift in this miniature sea. How does the DNA become stretched out along the two metres of its length, then unzipped to expose the one side, then have the amino acids joined to it, until the 400 or so segments are precisely built. The long string is separated from the exposed half of the DNA. A small tugboat of sorts takes it out through the wall of the cell into a waiting cylinder with a large door opened to receive the string. The door closes and then some unseen hand folds it into a protein. 
Meanwhile, the strand of DNA is zipped back into the double helix. It was before the alarm call sent a messenger to search along the DNA double helix, straighten it out in a long strip, unzip it and start the assembly. Meanwhile, the cylinder opens and another little tugboat transporter takes the molecule to the area where the original message was sent, where a new protein is required, like a scratch in your skin. The odds this assembly of 22 amino acids in sequence, not including half a left-handed and half a right-handed, and 400 or so is required, is a staggering number. 10 to the 198th power. That is 10 with 198 zeros. This number is larger than the number of atoms in the galaxy. This is 10 to the 198 zeros. To one, this is chance. You're all familiar with the double helix? What is the invisible mechanism that causes all of these vehicles to move parts into position after the DNA has been unzipped? And considering we all have 100 trillion cells, all working in a beehive of activity, then like a beehive, the swarm has a collective intelligence. Many souls joined in a harmony of life. Then as the heart surgeons work on a patient, Many have reported they have left their body to gaze down from the ceiling. Many go through a tunnel of light to be greeted by relatives and friends who have died before. Many are told they have to go back, and back they are brought by some larger unseen vehicle of sorts, angels, and they enter their body and recover life. Likewise, the angels in the cell are that small and is the hidden force. Death of the flesh occurs when the collective soul leaves and all cell reproduction winds down to stop functioning. Fallen angels caused the offspring of Cain via the females of Cain to conceive children, half angel and half human, by joining the human soul that does the life support and demon ghosts. The angels were made as sons of God, the male figure. While the earth and all life is of the mother, the ancients called Asherah. Now it gets odd. These spirits we know today as demons were originally live, material, soulless, angelic creatures. Beautiful angels similar to the Almighty Father. They did not require a soul drive to work their DNA. They were in God's image. If they did as commanded, free will was the problem. They were to watch over and guide man as the perfect human being would become immortal in the flesh once the mysterious male entity co-joined the soul's of man's female soul. This is the Jesus participle. The blood of Jesus has 23 female chromosomes and one Y male chromosome, proven by Israeli technicians when Ron Wyatt presented to them dried blood from the cross. This gave the child within Mary a baby of her genes and the Y from the Almighty. And Jesus was born of the soul of the Father. To turn that into a spirit for all mankind to wed, being female souls, required death of the flesh, releasing the soul of the Father. This is your inheritance. But any demon in you, no, they do not inherit. So the fallen angels were to become half human and half angels, they of the Father, known as sons of God. The overpowering force of this intrusion into human beings produced giants of superintelligence 
and a lust for blood. For if they could mate with all women and kill all the males, then they became God in the above-mentioned analogy, like a beehive of common beings. And this is why the Jews who call themselves Jews do not and, the, and are not, and the Illuminati, all the Satanists, they require the blood sacrifice of Christian children and drink their blood. They are aiming to acquire immortality through the blood of the child. And this is why they've been kicked out of Asian nations. And this is why over all history of the world, the Jews who call themselves Jews and are not, have been kicked out of 80, more than 80 nations throughout history. The world became so advanced intellectually at the time came when the Vedas had to be brought to inform the population of righteous people what was happening to them. The word Vedas means angels. What happened was an atomic war was set in motion in the area we know as Egypt, as India, sorry. This is an excerpt from History's Lost Lesson, Ancient Nuclear War Among Indus Valley Civilizations Re-examined, published July 20th, 2011 in India. Is man on the threshold of a new world or merely stuck on a circular treadmill repeating the doomed lessons from history which he never seems to learn? A growing number of scholars believe the world's macabre fascination with nuclear war is just the latest repeat in a series of blunders human technology seems obsessed with repeating. Ancient tales speaking of flying vimanas. Vimanas were real vehicles and the origin of the aeroplanes. Great wars were described in early religious texts. Weapons could literally level the land like a moving force field. In ancient India, we find words for certain measurements of length. One was the distance of light years, and one was the length of an atom. Only a society that possessed nuclear energy would have the need for such words. When Oppenheimer said, I am become the destroyer of worlds, he was quoting from these ancient books. Believe it or not, the deserts on a number of continents today are the result of prehistoric nuclear warfare. Historian Kisari Mohan Ganguly says that Indian sacred writings are full of such descriptions, which sound like an atomic blast as experienced in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He says references mention fighting sky chariots and final weapons. An ancient battle is described in the Drona Pava a section of the Mahabharata. The passage tells of combat where explosions of final weapons decimate entire armies, causing crowds of warriors with steeds and elephants and weapons to be carried away as if they were dried leaves of trees, says Ganguly. Man had developed atomic weapons which the angels in men caused to annihilate millions. Consider these verses from the ancient Maharabharata, a single projectile charged with all the power of the universe, an incandescent column of smoke and flame as bright as the thousand suns rose in all its splendour, a perpendicular explosion with its billowing smoke clouds the cloud of smoke rising after its first explosion formed into expanding round circles like the opening of giant parasols. It was an unknown weapon, an iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death which reduced to ashes the entire race of the Rishnas and the Andakas. The corpses were so burned as to be unrecognisable when excavations of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro reached the street level, they discovered skeletons scattered about the cities, many holding hands and sprawling in the streets 
as if some instant horrible doom had taken place. People were just lying, unburied, in the streets of the city. Excavations down to the street level revealed 44 scattered skeletons, as if doom had come so suddenly they could not get to their houses. All the skeletons were flattened to the ground, and father, mother and child were found flattened in the street, face down and still holding hands. And these skeletons are thousands of years old, even by traditional archaeological standards. What could cause such a thing? Why did the bodies not decay or get eaten by wild animals? Furthermore, there is no apparent cause of a physically violent death. These skeletons are among the most radioactive ever found on par with those at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At one site, Soviet scholars found a skeleton which had a radioactive level 50 times greater than normal. Other cities have been found in northern India that show indications of explosions of great magnitude. One such city found between the Ganges and the mountains of Rajam, Raj Mahal seems to have been subjected to intense heat. Huge masses of walls and foundations of the ancient city are fused together, literally vitrified. And since there is no indication of a volcanic eruption at Mohenjo-daro or at the other cities, the intense heat to melt clay vessels can only be explained by an atomic blast or some other unknown weapon. The cities were wiped out entirely. The hair and nails fell out. Pottery broke without apparent cause and the birds turned white. After a few hours, all foodstuffs were infected. To escape from this, the soldiers threw themselves in streams to wash themselves and their equipment. Until the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, modern mankind could not imagine any weapon as horrible and devastating as those described in the ancient Indian texts. Yet they very acutely described the effects of an atomic explosion. Radioactive poisoning will make hair and nails fall out. Immersing oneself in water gives some respite, though it is not a cure. They best estimate this occurred just before the flood. On the other side of the earth, in a primitive area, the inhabitants were fully devoured by the angels. Then came the intervention. Noah is compelled to build an ark. The ark story requires faith and not bother to piece it all together. Were there giant reptiles wandering the earth? Yes. Were there dinosaurs? Yes. Were they along with the giants wiped out? Yes. In fact, there are dinosaur footprints beside man's in the United States. And like all advanced learning, the universities are teeming with demons in men who order the destruction of the human footprints. They, that is the demons in men, the survivors of India. Various races of people were radiated. Many have been discovered and called cavemen. Their genes altered by radiation, then died out. Carbon dating is useless when a body has been exposed to radiation. The point is, I am telling you I am the soul of Yahweh, and I was in the body of Jesus. Very easy to understand if the original truth of reincarnation was still in the Gospels. But as expected, these demon spirits, the ghosts of the giants who intermarried with Cain descendants, have concocted a history and a way of comprehending history stretched out over millenniums. It's a thought you have to grapple with. For after all, what little intelligence you have been left with is derived from the demons many have within you. No matter what I say, no matter how much common sense I reveal, the demons in most of you will prevent you as it wants your soul 
as its vehicle and your body as its slave. So what have we? The demons today are the angels of the fallen angels, intermixed with the ghosts, intermixed with the daughters of man via Cain. A parable, so leave it alone. The reality is there are demons today and you were born of man and woman, an innocent child, but your parents are so stupid they let you be consumed by the modern world religions from demonised Hollywood to the pulpits. Donate so Israel can be refilled with demons. And you donate via the government's taxation scam, as in the days of Noah. Is this not the case in these days right now? Forget religion, it is a fact. <clears throat> Have the demonised men in high places caused the wars, poisoned you and your children, centralised the air, vaccinated poisons into you and the children? Is America becoming radioactive? Is Japan a testbed where stupid people actually trusted Americans with building nuclear plants on fault lines? the same people who vaporised your parents. Are you all insane? Jesus comes back and you treat God like a leper, calling out the demons to come kill me. Do you not think they have tried? After all, like you are cancer and diabetes too, malaria and so on. Then on top of that, I tell you, Hitler was on to them and I will do what he was stopped from doing creating paradise for your children. Now moving along to India, the nearly circular 2,154 metre diameter Lona crater, located 400 kilometres northeast of Mumbai and aged at less than 50,000 years old, could be related to nuclear warfare of antiquity. No trace of any meteoric material, etc., has been found at the site or in the vicinity. And this is the world's only known impact crater in basalt. Indications of great shock from a pressure exceeding 600,000 atmospheres and intense abrupt heat indicated by basalt glass spherules can be ascertained from the site. 2154 metres is 7066.9 feet. When we multiply by pi, it is 22,201 feet. This leads us to the Revelation 2220, quoting, Is he which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly, Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. 2221 is the last verse, quoting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The body weight of the Christ is 222 pounds. Also his length at birth was 22.2 inches and he was born, reborn to the earth January the 11th, 1944 at 2.22 a.m. He said he would come again. He also said he would come again like a thief in the night. Nobody knows when a thief will come. It's only after the advent that anybody is aware that a thief has come. The second advent, the second coming has already occurred. Reiterating, it was announced by Pope Benedict XVI who is the reincarnate of Peter, the Apostle. That is why, once again, Pope Benedict announced, Thou art the Christ, and upon this rock I will build my church, was a prophecy for this day now. It is the church now, and the gates of hell, being the Vatican itself, led by the Antichrist Francis, who is aware that the Christ is back and is not telling the world. So war continues, chemtrailing continues, murder and every 
foul thing and abomination continues while the Antichrist refuses to announce to the world, as Benedict did, that the Christ is back. Homosexuals running the church, infiltrating all nations, demoralising them, all of the things that Hitler recognised as the work of the Jew who calls himself a Jew and are not the ones whose holy book is the Talmud, the abomination that makes desolate. Reiterating, so Hitler was onto it. His teams of archaeologists had investigated the entire Indian ancient writings. You did not know that either, right? In fact, today the leading linguists are German, and a German is not influenced by the leaven of the Pharisee. They understood then there were flying ships, atomic weapons, demons for the simple reason they copied many of the machines and if you had been watching, he had flying saucers aided by the angels. Quoting from Matthew 16, 6, Then said Jesus unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. 16.11, how is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Let me be specific. It was the father who was speaking about his soul who would come and explain all things. Luke 12, 1, quoting, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid, that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear, Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And so who is he telling you to fear? Me, the Father, back again, the soul of Jesus, warning you of these things that I spoke of as Jesus. So the four horses of the apocalypse, what does it mean? The demon is in the vehicle, your past life, your soul, sitting on the four horses out of your control. An Indian, his charred body, similar to the bodies of Japanese after the atomic blast. This is what's being found. So what does it mean? The wheel that he's holding has seven spokes, seven lifetimes. Six men dead, one angel of death. The old man has seen six lifetimes, it the powerful angel of death. The empty chariot of life. Moments before your death. Here, a dead man is being grabbed by his enemy himself. He tries to run, reaching towards an angel in a ghost chariot. His arm is outstretched towards the angel, 
as it is surveying the death scene of six past lives. The horses left standing. Chariot of life stands stationary as his life ebbs away. He tries to run but is burdened by the weight of the seven-spoke wheel, the promise of seven lives with just one spoke to go. His fifth former life fears to let go. His own five corpses of past lives lay under his feet, scattered upon the earthly desert of untimely death via his own neglect. Brian Leonard Golight Lee Marshall the Lord Jesus Christ who warned in the Revelation 3.12 he would have a new name Revelation 19 verse 12 it would be a name written that only he would know and so if only he would know it then he has to declare it the number of his name is 312, the same as the verse of the Revelation that says he will have a new name. 312 is the English gematria of Brian, 44, Leonard, 69, Golightly, 115, and Marshall, 84, added together, 312. Pope Benedict XVI announced on March the 12th, 2013 that he had met Salvatore Mundi, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Salvatore Mundi means saviour of the world.